Holy shnikes! Look at that, nice. Look at that. Way better. Hey guys, Dan with Kane Custom Garage. And here's our next victim, the Steel 031. I'm gonna put this together for my uh, buddy Vinny. He's the guy I got all these loads of saws from last fall and I told him I'd put one of these 031s together for him. And so that's what we're gonna do next. So here it is guys, the Steel 031. Very popular firewood saw back in the day. And like I said, they must have made a crap load of them because they're everywhere. But they're a good saw. So I've got this guy, it seems to be in pretty decent shape. And I've got a, quite a few, uh, I've got a couple parts saws too, and a box of parts. So we got parts if we need them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna check this thing out. Uh, we're gonna clean it up, check the compression, check the spark, probably take the carburetor off and go through it. We'll check the oiler, make sure it's working. And yeah, just sort of go over everything and see if we can make a good saw out of this thing. I already see the, the AV mounts are toasted on it. But I think I've got a spare. So yeah, so yeah, we'll change that and just give her a good cleaning, good once over. Should be a good running saw. Okay, let's get to work. Okay guys, let's take a look at this thing. Let's do some preliminary checks. So, first thing I always do is take the bar and chain off. Holy shnikes! <laughs> Somebody had those on there. Good. That's good though. You don't want your bar slipping. Okay. So, yeah. I like to take the bar off, take the clutch cover off. Ew, nasty, dirty. We'll clean all that up. It's got a pretty decent bar and chain on it, though. Looks like it'll clean up. It's got a little chunk out of it there, but we can file that down. Okay. Bar and chain over there. Bar nuts. So yeah, she's all sludgy, dirty, nasty. We'll take it out and blow it off. And these steel chainsaws, you can't take the um, starter off like like most chainsaws. Their design is a little bit different. So the whole cover is part of the fuel tank too it's sort of weird but anyways i'm a rama that all feels pretty good and then these are a little different too because the cylinder is angled it's not as easy to take the muffler off you have to take the top cover off because the muffler sort of goes clear back into here so let's go ahead and take the top cover off of this thing. Should be a fairly, not too bad, fairly easy operation. But yeah, these stills are a little bit different to work on than most chainsaws. This, this particular design anyways. Okay, let's see if we can break these screws loose. one nice that one's out good and then we got these two for the handle Nice. 
Nice. And this guy here that holds the AV mount. <clears throat> nice, it came out. Some of these screws are seized in there sometimes. Yeah, see the, the funky steel AAV mount screw. And they get worn right here. I had one where it was worn clear through and it broke the head of the screw off. So, now we should be able to... Oh, I gotta get the air cleaner, air filter cover off. There's two more screws here. And I've noticed on these steels, they sort of played with different designs on the AV mount on the back. Some of them, the AV mounts are up here, and then some of them, the AV mounts are back here. It's sort of weird. I think the top handle is the same for all of them and they just use the solid mount for this setup but you can use this with the AV mount back here too I believe okay how's it gonna come off of there now what now what's that come on Just cause. I need to get me some of those T handles. Now what? Now what? Now what's holding me up here? This should come off here. What the heck? What am I missing? filter off while we're back here. For some reason. Air filter. See, they're sort of neat. They have the, the chokes built into the air filter. Uh, that's pretty cool. Oh, there's one more screw right there. That's what the deal is. That's where I was getting screwed up. Oh, and there's, a, and there's also a clip for the uh, throttle linkage that we need to get off. So just pop that bad boy off. Oh, watch where it goes though. This is the stuff I always lose. There. Okay, throttle linkage is out. One more screw in here. There. Oh, we can 
fuel everywhere. <laughs> oh, the fuel line came off. Probably should have emptied the fuel tank. So, let me go empty the fuel tank. And uh, we'll blow this bad boy off. Try and clean it up a little bit, and then we'll keep on working on it. I got all that old gas out of it. I haven't done any cleaning yet, because I thought I'd better get this off of here first. So see these steels, they have a rubber boot that, it, that, that goes from the carburetor to the cylinder. And that's part of the AV system, so, so the carburetor can sort of flop around in there. You know, it can, it can move with the AV mounts, but it has a rubber boot in there. So anyways, you just undo the fuel line. There's the fuel line. We'll put a new one on. And then it's got the two bolts holding the carburetor on. See, I just take those loose. And then we should be able to pry the carb. And then see, there's an impulse line too that goes on the bottom. We should be able to pop that carb out now. I was going to show you these. So see, there's our carburetor. We'll clean that up later. And then these steels. Be careful. They have a. Um, they have this compression ring that goes in there. Yeah. Let's see if we can get that out. So yeah, if you can pry that metal compression ring out. There we go. See that? See that guy? You see that? So if you pry that out of there, then you can push the, once you pry the metal ring out, you can, you can just take your finger and push the boot through the hole like that. There we go. And then the impulse line. I'm trying to remember what the easiest way to get that off of is. Ew. So see there's the air box. So now we need to take and if we're gonna blow this thing out without making a mess, we need to plug these holes with something. So get me a piece of paper towel. Stick in the intake hole so we don't get a bunch of garbage in the cylinder. So make sure that's plugged off good. And then we'll stick, oh, what can we stick in there? A screw or something? Hey, this will work. Okay, so now she's ready for some cleaning. See, I got the impulse line blocked off. I got the intake stuffed full of a piece of paper towel. And really, I think that's probably as far apart as we need to take it. I mean, we could, let's see. We could take the fuel tank off of it, I suppose. I'm trying to remember how it goes together. Okay, I figured out how to get the tank off this thing. There's a bolt right here. So yeah, we might as well just take the tank and everything off so we can give it a thorough cleaning. So yeah, there's a bolt here. And I think this is the only one on the inside. And then everything else is over here that holds the tank slash starter on. So let's take the 
Let's get the starter off first. We have sort of a sort of a different design on these. The starter is just the little the little recoil part that comes out, and then the housing and everything is part of the fuel tank. <laughs> sort of sort of funky, but it works. So see that the starter just comes out like this. Oh, oh, oh. This one's a little different than has a third screw with a, with like a retainer plate. Hmm. Interesting. See that little retainer plate thing? Okay. Okay, so then you got these screws. One here and one here. Oh. Oh. Man. Mm. That's never been off there before. Come on. Mm. Okay, let's see how we'll get these screws out, and then this fuel tank slash starter housing should come off of there. Hey, look at that. Oh, that's right, we gotta do the, we gotta get the, uh, we gotta get the ignition switch off. There we go. Okay, there it is. Oh, damn. Look how nasty that is. So, yeah, it's a good thing we took her apart. And that's the, that's the fuel filter flopping around in there. Okay, so we got this thing broke down. All the orifices are plugged. So that we can give her a good cleaning. And then we'll take this muffler off and take a look in the cylinder and make sure this saw's good. But yeah, look at that. Look how nasty that thing is in there. Where's my scraper? Yeah, look at that. Just a big load of crap in there. Yuck. Okay, so let me spend some time cleaning this now, and then we'll move on to the next stage. Okay, I got the bulk of everything scraped off. So now it's time to do some cleaning. And so on the power head, I like to just blow them off with compressed air. I'm sort of leery of using water or pressure washers or anything. Because I've ruined a saw before that way, so... Let's blow this bad boy off. Okay, so now this stuff, the peripheral parts, we can clean with water and some cleaner. So what we're gonna do, ew, we'll use some, uh, I like to use super clean on this kind of stuff. So here we go, here's our super clean. And you just gotta be careful. Like on this painted stuff, you don't want it to be on there too long because it'll actually fade the paint. 
Yeah, this stuff works good. So this one, we won't let it sit for too long. Where's the end of my hose? Oh. And then we'll give it a blast. See, look at that. Cleans all the nastiness right on out of there. Clean this mess up and get back to work. You know what they say, cleansly, cleanliness is next to godliness, right? Nasty. That's what's funny about some of these saws. You probably take a pound of weight off of them just in dirt. Okay guys, this looks much better. Now she's all clean, we can actually work on it. Look at that. Way better. Got all these parts all cleaned up. Mmm, beautimous. Top cover's clean. We'll take a little rubbing compound to it and get that oxidization off of there. But yeah, everything's clean, tank's clean. And I was gonna show you guys too, there's, so there's this plastic cover that goes, oops, goes in here, like so. And if you take it out, it's a lot easier to clean, so. So that's that. So anyways, back to the uh, power head here. So now we can take a peek in the cylinder and see what the, uh, piston looks like so there's one screw here that holds the bottom of the muffler sort of an interesting muffler design isn't it break those bad boys loose So yeah, very unique cylinder design. Okay, here we go. The moment of truth. Let's see what this thing looks like. And they have this heat shield thing here. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Let's get the old flashlight in there. Let's take a look. Oh yeah, that thing's mint. Minty. Beautiful in there. Okay, nice. She's gonna be a good one. Okay, so, before we get too carried away, let's plug this hole up. Because that's the last thing we want, it's a bunch of garbage in there. And then, so yeah, I'll just do a little more cleaning in here. Give it another blowout. Because really, that's the most. The heck? Damn. But yeah, anyways, that's really the most critical thing on these saws is 
you know, take them apart once in a while and get them clean because they run hot, they overheat. If they got too much crap in there. Okay, that's better. So yeah, always good to get them as clean as you can. And then, you know, if you want to keep going on this thing, like if you wanted to pop the cylinder off and work on that, it's pretty easy to get to now. It's all just right there. But we don't need to do that on this one. So, let's put this, make sure we got to let's scrape some of this carbon out of this muffler. Man, that's a nice muffler too, it's not all beat up. Let's take a look at the screen. the spark arrestor screen. So you just take the one screw out and then you just slide it out. Oh yeah, it's pretty clear still. She's nice and clear. But what I wanted to do, let's put this, let's give this guy a little wire brush treatment. My five dollar electric motor that I got at a yard sale. It works good. Oh come on. How come there's always a bunch of left-handed gloves but no right-handed ones? There we go. Just clean her up a bit. Ooh, that looks better. And we'll put the spark arrestor back in. Just slide her in there. And line up the hole. can put this guy on. See? Get ahead of yourself. And I was just saying to myself, I was just thinking to myself, that's a little weird that they don't have a gasket, but I thought, whatever. You know, maybe the tolerance is, but this makes sense, because this aluminum, aluminum heat shield is the gasket. You dummy. So yeah, here we go, taking it out again. I might be able to just slip it in there, we'll see. That's my biggest problem is I get ahead of myself and then I forget stuff. And that's the worst when you have to go back and take something apart when you've already put it together once. Oh yeah, it'll just slip in there. Okay, thank you. Okay, that makes more sense. So see how critical that is to get the crap out from behind all this stuff? Because, I mean, that's what cools the saw, and it was packed up pretty good with sawdust and stuff under there. So now she has some room to breathe again. There, that makes more sense, right? Now we have a soft something to go between the muffler and the cylinder, which is this a piece of aluminum. Tighten this up again. Okay, now we're done. This is good. Now, the other thing that I wanted to do was check spark. 
So let's do that real quick. Probably should have done it a little earlier in the game. See the spark plug looks pretty good. It's a nice light brown. So just hold it against the cylinder and take your handy dandy um, impact or whatever you got. You could just pull the pull rope. We could have put the starter back on and pulled it that way, but this will work. I'll get it to where I can see here. Make sure the switch is on. Yep. Okay, here we go. Oh yeah. See it? Yep. We good. So that's that. Spark plug looks good. Interestingly enough, the socket is the same size for the clutch as it is for the spark plug. That's sort of convenient. Okay, so we have spark. Piston looks good. I didn't check compression, but I'm pretty sure we're going to be okay on that. I'll check it after we put it together. And let's see, the only other thing I wanted to check was... I wanted to take a look at the uh, oil pump situation and then I think we'll call it good for this video so righty tighty lefty loosey is not is not the game plan on these it's righty loosey lefty tidy <laughs> see look at that there's our clutch she looks good clutch drum looks pretty decent fairly new really Bearing, we'll put a little grease on that. And then on these steels, there's a um, there's a washer that has a pin in it. And that's what drives the oil pump, so don't mess that up. And then this gear. So this is the oil pump. And I think this comes out, I can't remember. We can take this cover off, let's take a look. Because I'm actually curious to see what's in one of these, because I have another 031 that's in really nice shape, but the oil pump doesn't work. So, let's take a look. And then this will be the last check before we go and put this thing back together and see if it'll run. And I think I'm gonna have to, I think I'm gonna have to do a two part series on this because this one's running a little long already. And I like to try and keep them around 20, 30 minutes. So I'm gonna have to do some serious editing on this one to get the, to cut out the fluff. And here's our oil pump actually in there I think these just come out these gears maybe hell I don't know oh this one comes off okay so this one has oil in there so it must be leaking behind there and I figured out how to get this gear out so you just you just turn it backwards and it sort of backs itself out and just keep turning it and turning it and pulling it and it'll come out. I wasn't sure if it was supposed to come out or not or if you're supposed to take the whole pump, but see, so that comes off. So set that aside for now. And so see, this is all full of oil in here, so it must have a leak or something behind it. So I'll take that apart. Let's take a look. So you just give her a little, little pry like that and she pops out. And there's our oil pump. So this is another thing you can do, like if you're not getting oil, you can take that pump out and blow through these orifices. One goes to the tank and then one goes to the hole up here. Oh no, right here. Yeah, this one and this one. 
But my guess is it probably needs a new gasket here. So, I wonder how hard that is to get out of there. Boy, it's stuck in there good, too. You know what I think I'll do? Is we'll get it cleaned up really well. And I think we'll just put a thin coating of moto seal on the pump side. And that should take care of it. Let's give it a little blow through the, through the orifices. Yep, that came out there, okay. <laughs> and I could hear it, I could hear it blowing in the tank. Okay. So, let's see. If we're gonna put some moto seal on, you'll wanna wipe it with a little brake cleaner, just to make sure it's all clean. Same thing with this guy. So, let's do it. We'll just give her a super thin coat. Okay, that's back in there. Now we can put our gear back in. And you just sort of turn it in there. There, like that. And then this gear goes in. Like that. And then this goes here like this. Oh, see, I almost screwed up. See, here I go again. Almost screwed up again, guys. Son of a... Yeah, screwing up right and left. Now we can... Okay, now we're doing something right here. This goes here, line up the holes. There, there. Finally, okay. I got it. Now we can put this guy on. Oh, this is off of the other saw. Okay, finally guys, son of a, see every one of these things is just a little bit different. That other one had a washer and a nut. So anyways, make sure your clutch turns. That looks good. I'll give the clutch a little tightening, so lefty tidy. There we go. Okay, so that's probably good for today, guys. We checked spark, that's good. Checked the cylinder, that looks good. Cleaned up the muffler, cleaned up the saw. This one's electronic ignition, so there's no points to worry about. Checked out the oiling system. That looks pretty good. So next thing, on the next video, we'll pop a kit into this carburetor we'll put that back on we'll put the saw back together and then we'll see if she runs so stay tuned for the next one guys we'll see you then